Hey, what's going on guys? It's another beautiful day here in Montana. So for today's video, I'm gonna give you a behind the scenes look or maybe an over the shoulder look, we could call it. I need a, I need a name for this segment. A buddy of mine has an event coming up here in a couple weeks and we're gonna design a t-shirt that he's gonna be able to use for what's called DTG or direct to garment. It's a way to print straight onto a t-shirt. So what we're gonna do is make a file that then he can take, give to his printer and then have it made up for him before the conference happens. Now I've already recorded this once and I got it all done and then screen flow crashed on me and I lost everything. So we're doing it again and my professor Professors in college always said it's always faster the second time. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to pause at some key points and let you kind of look over my shoulder. I'll show you some things that I've done along the way. And then of course there's some uh, files attached. There's a Dropbox link down below if you want to grab the assets and grab the t-shirt template that I use for you guys to go ahead and use for yourself. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so I've already done this once, like I said, I just wanna show you this is the finished project and what I'm gonna do also, there's gonna be a link below where you can grab this vector t-shirt file. I use this thing all the time. It's a great way to mock up design. So what I'll do a lot of times here is when I have a mock up with a design, all I have to do is hit my direct selection tool or hit the letter A to grab this base color layer. And then what you can do, I'm gonna come up here to essentials and I'm just gonna reset essentials. So you and I are looking at the same thing. I'm in illustrator right now. I'm gonna come down to the fill and just click on this. And we're just gonna throw a different color in here just for the sake of you seeing how quickly this works. Now, depending on what color you're using, in this case, I might wanna change this shadow layer. So I'm gonna grab this real quick. I'm just gonna click on it once and then I'm gonna go to select same fill and stroke and it's going to grab everything in this shirt that's this blue color that i used for the other other color here so i'm going to double click in the fill which will let me uh actually what we want to do let's grab the eyedropper tool instead we're just going to sample this pink color so it matches now i'm going to double click in here and just drag it down just a touch there we go. So now it looks like a nice shadow and uh, add some depth to the shirt. You don't have to do this. It's just, I don't know, just add some, some character to it. And I'm going to grab this blue next to it. We'll get my eyedropper tool and select the shirt color. So now if you want to send a mock-up to a client with the right shirt color with their graphic on top, you don't have to put this in two places. Uh, sometimes depending on what you're doing as far as the artwork you're using, you know, maybe it's going to be a much smaller artwork like on the chest or something like that and you want to show placement but then you want them to be able to see the details that's why I send my mock-ups like this and then oh, you can see that uh, when I change that shirt color I change it over here too but anyway and then I'll send we're gonna send the outlined artwork so everything all broke apart for them to be able to use for the printer to use and then I also broke apart the elements without outlining the font so the client could use this in some slideshows they're going to be doing and different things like that so this is where we're headed okay so this is how I I got everything ready to send to the client but let's go ahead and step way the heck back and I want to show you how I got this far so the first thing that I did for this project let me uh, let me find my window here was I went into Envato Elements because it's for a friend. I'm not charging him anything for it. I just wanted to do something for him and I wanted to do it fast. Now, let's be honest, it's just a mountain. Like it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't take me that long to either sketch this on my iPad and bring it in or to use a Wacom tablet or even like honestly guys, just the pen tool, right? Like it's a mountain, it's not that complicated. We're just gonna click and drag right? We're making mountains here. So, I mean, I could have, I could have gone that route to make something custom and unique. And, you know, as an artist, it's, it's that fine line between being a production artist and getting things done or being like, you know, not a real artist, but, but being able to like put your artistic touch on things. And so being able to tell the difference and when something needs more polish versus when you just got to get something done is a really important skill to have. So in this case, I knew that I didn't have a lot of time because a couple things actually, one is my wife is pregnant and we went into the hospital yesterday, uh, for early contractions, no baby yet, but, uh, it was definitely uh, a reminder that we've got a baby on the way and I didn't have a lot of time to mess around with getting this graphic out. So uh, that and then also now that I launched a new course and I'm doing YouTube channels There's just a lot going on So what I did is I went into Envato elements I searched for mountains right and I just bookmarked all of these different options here and I ended up downloading a bunch of them and then what I'm gonna do is just show you my let's go to this project file I'm gonna go to my main comp file just so you can see my thought process without having to watch me do the whole thing so basically what I did and I might even drop in some of the time-lapse video here 
just so you can see the first round of this before things crashed on me. But basically I grabbed all of those different vector files from those templates I brought in and I just kind of picked apart uh, some different things. So I really like this mountain range here and I use those as an element. And then I didn't use any of the fonts. I was just trying to kind of explore some different things. So here's a look at that time-lapse real quick just to kind of see the thought process. All right, now one, one tip that I wanna show you that I honestly forgot about that's actually a really cool tip for this is as I was trying to blend two different pieces of artwork, right? So if I look at these mountains that I used, the lines are really straight and clean, but the font that I used is definitely grungy and nowhere near that. So I needed to make the lines kind of grungy, I guess you could call it. So the way that I did that, uh, this is, if anything you can take away from this video, I think this tip is, is really valuable. So I'm just gonna throw, let's see, let me grab, I think I've got the original artwork up here. Nope, oh, actually, here, we'll just do this. All right, so what I did is I applied a stroke to this. So if I turn the stroke off, and let's just zoom in, let's make this a little bigger. All right, so we see the lines are really clean. So what you can do, I'm gonna hit the letter X to swap so my stroke fill is on top, and I'm gonna come to the brushes. So let's see, the fastest way, if you're not seeing this, I'm on Essentials, I'm gonna switch down to Painting, and now it should bring up my swatches and my brushes and all that kind of stuff. If you don't see the brushes, come up here to window and then down to brushes, you'll see the brushes window. I'm gonna go ahead and tear this panel out just so we can see it a little bit better. And this is really a hidden gem in, in Illustrator, I think. So what I'm gonna do is in this little tiny twirl down menu in the top right of the brushes window, I'm gonna come down to open brush library. And then I'm gonna come down to artistic and then over here to chalk, charcoal and pencil. So I'm gonna click on that, and now it gives me a bunch of different brushes. Well, here's the deal. You can use brushes as strokes, so let me show you what I mean. I could grab any one of these. I'm just gonna click on it, and you can see that I've got my stroke selected here, and it applied that to my object. Now, before I clicked on it, just to make sure you're, you're able to follow along, I had this shape still selected, so you see the... Uh, the anchor points here highlighted. So now when I click on any of these, it applies that to it. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the stroke itself, because this is just a stroke, just the width of the stroke. So let's go ahead and find our stroke panel. It's right here. And again, if you don't see that, come to window, down to stroke, there it is. All right, so it's set to one point. And typically I like to bring it down to 0.25 or even you know 0.5 point. So now that it's not quite so crazy, but if I zoom in, you can see it's no longer a straight line. It's got some texture to it. So anyway, you can, you could play all day with this. There's lots of different brushes and, and there's a lot and, and lots of different ways you can apply this. That's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're going to have time here today without this being like a 45 minute video. So, um, but anyway, just play with that. So you've got a way to add grunge and texture to what would be a otherwise smooth line. Uh, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger just for the sake of the exercise so we can see some things now. Okay, so the next thing I wanna point out is you've got this shape, but if I were to change my fill to anything else, you'll see now that the stroke, in some ways this is actually kind of a cool effect, but maybe you want it to be able to change all with one color. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to Object, down to Expand Appearance, and watch what happens with that white stroke and that green color. If I click on that, it now creates a fill. So both of these are fills, but if we look at my fill color over here, it's got a question mark because there's two different colors. So what we're gonna do is I could leave these separate. So if I click on just one color, if I hit Command Shift G to ungroup it, it's the same as going to Object Ungroup here. Uh, I'll click off and then click back. Now I should be able to, uh, let's double click. It's making me a liar here. Okay, we'll drill into it. All right, there we go. So we've got this green shape here and we still have the stroke as a separate object but the stroke is no longer a stroke, it's a fill, we've been over that. So now what we wanna do is we're gonna highlight this whole thing, and there's a couple ways we could do that. We could hit Shift and the letter M to get our Shape Builder tool, and we could just click and drag over all of this just to kind of merge it all together as one. Okay, that's one way to work. You could also come up here to Window and go down to Pathfinder, and we could click right here on this very first option to unite both the front and the back, and it's gonna mash it all together as one shape. So now if I click off 
and click back, you'll see that there's no longer a question mark. It is just one color. So no matter what color I pick, it would be just that one color. So that's just my quick tip for this project on how to get from this original artwork that was really smooth and didn't have any grunge and trying to make it kind of match what's going on here with this grungy font. Okay, so now that that's all done, and uh, and again, I'm kind of flying through the middle bits of this because I'm assuming you have some Illustrator experience. More importantly, I want to show you how I work, I mean, kind of, from beginning to end without taking, you know, two hours to watch this thing. So, um, so you can see my artboard's a mess. I've got stuff everywhere. And then I brought in the final pieces that I liked. And then I went ahead and made a new document. So I went to File, New, and we'll just skip that for now. And then I just grabbed this, copied it, and then pasted it into that new document to bring it in, okay? So that's how I got from here over to, let's go to that final document that is now all jacked up. Let's go ahead and step back before I forget and accidentally save over the actual true final file here. Oh my goodness, all right, there we go. There's my final file. So what I did is I made a new document and then I got my, out, uh, my artboard tool, shift and the letter O to get the, let's see, where's it at, right there, the artboard tool. So I started with this artboard and then I just hit the alt button or the option button and then click and drag and then I held down shift to keep it straight. And when I'm doing this, let's see up here, I think it is. All right, so this little toggle when you have the artboard tool selected will copy the artwork with it. So if that's not turned on, if I copy the artboard, it's just gonna copy over the size of the artboard but not the actual artwork on it. So what I did is I just copied that over and then I went ahead and made this just a one color option. So the thought being here, he'll be able to send this into press and they'll be able to grab this and make it whatever size it has to be for the shirt. And then this I brought in with just the original font that I used for him to be able to see that. And then one other thing I did was, and, and maybe we could talk about this real quick. Um, I don't want this tutorial to get to be super long, but uh, maybe comment below if you like the longer tutorials or if you just want the quick hit tips and tricks. So you'll notice that I've got this really rough kind of uh, edge that follows the font a little bit. Well, the original artwork was just this mountain with the straight line below it. So here's how I did that. I'm just gonna copy this down here, scale it up a little bit. And for the sake of this going fast, we're just gonna copy this down here and scale it up. Let's change the color so we can see what we're doing here. And I just brought it up into, actually I don't think I brought it up that much, just about like that. And now I'm gonna go to, let's see, type. And we are going to create outlines. So it's no longer a font. It's now a shape that we can manipulate. And then I went to, let's go to, let me think about it for a second. Um, object down to path and then offset path. So we're going to offset the path. I'm going to click preview and it's going to get kind of crazy here because there's lots of grunge texture and, and points and paths here. So it's going to get a little bit crazy, but we're going to let it do its job here. And you can change the amount of offset, just how far it goes beyond the text. So we'll click okay for now. And we've got all these as a separate shape. I'm gonna go ahead and merge these with my Pathfinder window. We'll unite those. And I'm gonna hit Command X to cut it. Otherwise it still groups it together with this stuff. I'm gonna hit Command uh, B as in boy to paste it behind everything else. And I'm just gonna change the color again so we can kind of see what we're working with. Wow, that's kind of hard to look at actually. Let's try something different. Well, it's fine. Um, anyway, so now what I did, you can see these are really rough points. So I just selected this blue outline that I've got going on. I took the pen tool and when I hover over an anchor point, it lets me, it's got the little minus sign to remove those anchor points. And the reason why I do this instead of like, uh, you know, deleting it with the direct selection tools because then it would leave a gap in your path. But by doing it this way, it's just removing an anchor point. So I got it kind of close where I wanted to. And then I brought in the, let's see here. Let's go find that. Uh, it is, give me just a second, guys. So I'm still in the painting workspace and depending on what workspace you're at, you're gonna see different tools over here in your toolbar. Well, if I come to the very bottom, these three little dots, I can click edit toolbar and you can see there's a lot more tools in here at your disposal. So what we're looking for is the smooth tool and it is right here. So the smooth tool, if I click on that, actually we're just gonna throw it, do I throw it in here? I don't know guys, double click, there it is, all right. Whew, got it. So now I'm gonna do with the smooth tool is just drag over this line 
and it's going to smooth out those anchor points. So you can continue to keep clicking and dragging over these points to smooth it out. And it'll, it'll round out the anchor points and it'll uh, remove some of them as well to kind of make it uh, more of a, a smooth shape instead of that hard jagged edge. Okay. So then the last step that I did with this is I shift clicked on the mountain. I've got both of them. And then I went over here to the pathfinder and I went minus front. So this blue layer is in front of the mountain. So it's going to cut away from the mountains, hold down the alt key to do that. So depending on, on how your artwork set up, you might have to hold down the art, the alt key to create a compound shape. Now I can click expand and it's going to remove that extra data. And now we've got just this mountain range. So uh, there we go. That's how I got to that stage of the game. And then the last thing that I did was if I jump back into my artwork that I sent him, I have a final sent. I went into my files and I created this Illustrator file. And then he said, hey man, uh, I'm actually more comfortable in Photoshop. Could you send me a Photoshop file? I was like, yeah, sure, of course. So what I did is I created a brand new Photoshop document. And then I went in and I made the background layer blue. Okay. And then I went back to my Illustrator file and I grabbed this logo as a whole, copied it, jumped back into Photoshop and pasted it as a smart object right in the middle maybe scaled it up a bit. I don't remember. Anyway, um, got it there. And then I added a color overlay It made it white. Click OK. So then I left him one layer and I renamed it as mountain and text. So that's what that is right there. So we made that layer and then I brought in just the mountain so he could grab that with anything you wanted. Again, he's comfortable in Photoshop. Then I brought in, uh, I, I built over the top of this, I brought in the font that I used so he would have those as a separate layer. So just so you can see what's going on here, um, we'll just change the color. So it's not perfect, but it's close to at least give him an option to edit the text inside the file. And that's how I made the Photoshop file. And that's basically what I sent him guys. So, wow, there was a lot of information in this tutorial and got on my channel, I'm still trying to figure out how to, how to teach so much content in a way that keeps your attention, but doesn't overwhelm you. So don't forget down below, we've got the player control where you can speed it up. You can slow it down because I know I went pretty fast. So for those of you that, that this was complex, you can watch the video again, you can rewind it, you can play it back slow. For those of you that this is easy and you totally get it, we'll just skip ahead and you know fast forward stuff. But anyway, I hope you learned a lot about my process and how to make a t-shirt. The last thing that I would say that I didn't really cover is I just made it in, in Illustrator at an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper size because I can scale it up any size I want to. So before I actually send it to press or to go be printed, I would talk to whomever is gonna be printing it figure out exactly what file type they want and if they've got a template that I can just throw this into before I ship it off to them. So that's the last step and that's just something you're gonna have to talk to your printer about to figure out what they need. So I hope you love this video. I hope you learned a ton. Thanks for tuning in and watching. It means a lot to me. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. And if you have any ideas for what you wanna see next, feel free to comment below because I'm running out of ideas and I wanna be able to teach you guys what you wanna see, but I don't know what you wanna see if you don't leave comments. So hopefully we will see those comments and we will see you on Friday in the next one.